Texas, Iowa, where I have the privilege to spend my vacation this year in these unprecedented times. Uh, today, three professors from three countries and two continents will discuss how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected colleges and universities in the United States, Czechia, and Slovakia. We are joined by Professor Dalibor Mikulas, head of the International Relations Office at Palazzi University in Olomouc. Dr. Uh, Professor Daniela Ostatnikova, Faculty of Medicine, Institute of Physiology and Academic Research Center for Autism at Comenius University in Bratislava, Slovakia. Dr. Den. Um, Hello, good afternoon. Uh, and Professor John Kaimov, uh, Associate Professor of German and International Studies Administrative Coordinator at Co College mm -hmm. here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Good afternoon. So we will start with Slovakia, a country that took a very rigorous approach and a strict lockdown, resulting in one of the lowest numbers of COVID-19 cases worldwide. Professor Ostatnikova, what did COVID-19 affect, or how did it affect Comenius University? How did your university respond to the lockdown and the later reopening? How did the pandemic influence student applications and enrollment? And most importantly, how do you feel you will be prepared for a second wave? <laughs> thank you very much. Hello. I am very proud to be now with you. And thank you very much for inviting me to this panel. Uh, let me share with you my, my comments on the slides I have prepared for you. So uh, I would love to divide my contribution, my short, short contribu contribution to few subtitles. I will speak about higher education institutions in Slovakia. Then I will speak about COVID-19 and uh, higher institutions in Slovakia, about short-term challenges, long-term challenges, and about positive and negative impact. Can you proceed, Teresa, to the second slide? Uh, we have in Slovakia 34 institutions, higher education institutions, 20 public, 3 state and 11 private. So Komenius University, where I'm from, is the first Slovak university which was founded in 1919. So we have more than 100, 100 years history. Uh, it has 30 um, faculties. I'm sorry. So it, it has 13 faculties and more than 30,000 students. Uh, Faculty of Medicine and Comen at Comenius University uh, is running two programs, general medicine and dentistry program in English language since 1993. Internationalization has become a reality after Velvet Revolution and continues to be a priority of Comenius University. We provide medical education for more than 700 international students who comprise nearly one third of all medical students which are trained during this academic year. Based on very long lasting partnership with international universities, medical school developed new teaching methods and substantially improved quality of medical education during the last decade. Let me mention just two most effective projects with Nova Southeastern University in Florida, thanks to personal effort of Dr. Okusek, th thank you, Cecilia, and New York University School of Medicine, thanks to personal engagement of Dr. Jan Wilczek, Nobel alumnus of Comenius University. We have introduced simulation-based medical education, team-based learning, problem-based learning, OSCEs, and virtual patients. Uh, can you proceed, Teresa, to the third slide? Uh, now, how the coronavirus influenced, influenced uh, Slovakia and our education, you can see the chart. The actual numbers today are confirmed, are 1927 confirmed cases. You can see also number of recovered, number of infected in a red color, and number of deaths is still 28. So the mortality is 2% in Slovakia. Uh, well, March 6 was the first coronavirus case. March 12 
higher education institutions closed following governmental regulation. Slovakia was among the first countries in the world and the second in EU after Czech Republic to make the wearing, wearing of masks mandatory in public. So uh, we developed methods to minimize the spread of COVID-19 through non-pharmaceutical interventions and preventive measures such as social distancing and self-isolation and uh, all, the, all the schools are therefore closed. So about 160,000 students stopped their on-site education and remote teaching and learning has become a critical lifeline for education. The dorms were closed, so international students had to move back to their home countries and or find private accommodation with access to internet. Although we were not the beginners, as I have previously mentioned, in new teaching methods still to switch completely from on-site to online mode in the middle of the semester was really a challenge. Moreover, a childcare obligations that resulted from school closures make our teachers extremely overloaded by responsibilities for their own children in addition to their home office duties. It is also worth mentioning that students and teachers were involved in community and health services participating in COVID diagnostic, throat and nose swabs, temperature measuring and in hospitals, spreading information about the virus, etc., etc. Can you advance, Teresa, to another slide? So what were the immediate challenges? Mm -hmm. The first was the choosing the most relevant tool for online education. Our university has chosen MS Teams and uh, provides also support for implementation. We were listening to semi webinars, seminars, courses for teachers and students. And also the next challenge was planning the study schedule, including the distance learning programs. Crucial was the team in the Center for Information Technology and the Center for Online Learning, which helped to accelerate the plan of online education. Just one example of the increased activity. In March 2020, the number of active users of MS Teams tool was 320. In two months, the number has, uh, was exceeded 10,600 users. So we really moved on very quickly. The next challenge was open education, educational resources. We were exposed to, to materials which was free to use, some webinars, as I have already said, and it was really helping sub substantially. Monitoring students' learning process uh, increase the motivation of our students. They have to find the places with the access to internet and uh, they were just uh, stuck in their homes and we have to facilitate the learning process by, by designing examinations, by designing, designing checking the, the um, students' learning process. And international students uh, were really problems that time because they were kicked out of dorms and some of them um, have gone back home. Some of them were locked here, dominantly students for far, from Far East countries as Iran, Afghanistan, Russia. We do not have any final statistics, but our prediction is that uh, about 10% of currently enrolled students will not continue in the next academic years. Of course, schools are the hubs of social activity and human interaction. When schools and dorms were closed, many students miss social contact that is also essential to learning and development. So internationalization is really compromised. Students will probably will not willing to study <laughs> far from their home countries. Also Erasmus program and other in international exchange program were postponed from spring to four months. So dropout of international students will, will appear. Uh, Teresa, can you proceed on the long-term challenges, which I have listed also? Um, 
The first one is educational education innovations. Uh, we discovered that we have to be more open to online teaching, which was, which was not true in Slovakia. So we have learned how to combine video lectures and team-based learning, simulations and clinical exposures, which is quite a problem at Comenius University Medical School. Um, many students were happy for not losing time traveling to school and hospitals, declaring that the learning was more efficient. But with home quarantine prolongation and social isolation and the loss of social communication resulted many problems, including decrease of effectiveness, depression and panic, and students really needed uh, psychological counseling and psychological help. For this reason, the university also adopted some legisla legislation processes students had the possibilities to move their final exams to August and September. They will not be financially punished, not paying fees for prolongations of their study. So, uh, as I have mentioned, the internationalization, of course, um, is one of the biggest issues for the next years. Uh, and what is the problem is the lack of clarity regarding how the next that academic year will fall. Students as well as teachers have a long list of questions. None of them have been clear uh, yet. And the schools have to adopt to such pandemias in the near future and make their study plan very, very flexible. So again, we have um, economy problems through uh, because of international students, because of teachers' productivity, because of administrative staff, which is um, maybe not so important now as we are doing, doing our teaching online and with work efficiency. So addressing all these following challenges we requ will require um, communication and I think personalized outreach. So my last slide Teresa will be about summarizing of positive and negative impacts. So I think near future looks very uncertain, but I am I am positive, and I think that that hope lies ahead. What was positive for me is that the teacher have overcome the initial barrier for entering the world of e-learning. And we have to move on now. Of course, the negative sides appeared as we are having the headaches, backbone problems, sitting at the, at the computers. Um, we would obviously need to educate teachers to be ready to formulate appropriate questions and to be ready to summarize students' answers and make them to learn effectively. Of course, it is important the to have the online technology and online learning platforms. So um, I think that we are very, we are very, very positive about the open access resources, what we didn't have till now in Slovakia. And if it is true that we can use them, so uh, the online learning platforms will move on the medical studies as well. But there are also a negative impacts, social distancing, social isolation. So I think that uh, students were really, some of the students were depressed, some of the students were really lacking, lacking the communication and the, uh, the group learning, team-based learning they have to rely on their own personal time management. And it is, not, it is not true only for students, but I think it's true also for teachers. So the personal time management was very, very important as uh, we were talking to, stu uh, to students and the students had to talk to other teachers having other subjects. So we have to be really, we're really very patient about the whole schedule. Uh, I have been talking about increasing dropout rates and lost opportunities for students 
mainly from the international students from Far East and from the countries students students uh, are coming to Comenius University in Slovakia. And um, as we are at the medical school, um, what uh, is of great concern are practical skills and um, personal contact with patients and in the hospitals. And I think that this is what we are to overcome during the next month. So thank you very much for listening. That's all from me for now. Thank you. I would have, before we switch to the next uh, speaker, I uh, would have a follow-up question. What we had here, uh, or one of the biggest issues that we needed to solve is actually uh, the equal opportunities for the students and equal access to uh, the online resources. And uh, uh, not every student at home has, you know, like the available broadband internet or has a laptop for its own that needs to share with others uh, and those things. How, how were you able to address those concerns? Well, um, to be honest, the students of medicine didn't have such a problems. As we look at the at the Comenius University as a whole, so they they used the computers from their parents at the offices because they have home office as well and uh, with home office uh, the transport of notebooks are very very common so i i didn't i didn't meet with any concern with uh, not having particular um, access to internet or to the computers Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, now Professor uh, Professor Mikulaj uh, has the situation in uh, Czechia be similar at Prague University, or how you would describe the situation you have to face. Hello, my <clears throat> many greetings. Hopefully, you can hear me. I'm not in the Czech Republic. I'm in Croatia. So uh, hopefully, the internet is going to be fine, not just for me, but also for you. Um, but let's get back to the topic. Speaking about Palacki University Olomouc, uh, well, as, as you indicated, we have something like three to five minutes. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very brief. Uh, I, I'm going to split my presentation into th uh, three larger segments. Firstly, something about the university. Uh, as you might know, uh, the university, Palacki University Olomouc is the second oldest in the country. It's one of the best uh, in the Czech Republic. It's a research-oriented university. Uh, with uh, 4,000 employees, which uh, makes us uh, the largest uh, uh, employer in the whole Olomouc region. Uh, we are a highly internationalized university, speaking about Central European contextuality. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we had last year we had 4,500 international students, who are a university with uh, approximately 23, 24,000 students. Uh, speaking about internationalization, last year we uh, were awarded uh, the, uh, the, the EAIE Award, which is the European Award for uh, Excellence in Internationalization. So uh, that would be really briefly about the university. I wanted to, to provide you with this brief uh, characteristics because um, this is an introduction to how difficult the, the whole situation uh, uh, was to us. So we started uh, the summer semester of this academic year in a regular way. Obviously, everything uh, had to be changed. And uh, we uh, transferred uh, our teaching into, in the middle of, of, of March, into online teaching. Uh, and uh, that was just the beginning of the story because obviously uh, everything had to be somehow postponed. Uh, uh, from the middle of, of, of the semester, all the students uh, were following online courses. They, they participated in online activities. Uh, uh, speaking about the state certified exams, they, they were slightly postponed. But uh, in, in May and June, uh, even these uh, 
were carried out in a regular way. We started with online state certified exams, but then we, uh, because of, of uh, better results, COVID-19 results, and the situation was becoming better, uh, we were able to arrange uh, regular state certified exams uh, of just for example, the regular means that the students were able not to wear the masks uh, if they were uh, in groups under 15. And obviously there had to be uh, the difference, uh, 1.5 uh, meter difference between, between them. Um, but the semester was prolonged and, and now the students can carry out in, in their exam periods, uh, even the graduation ceremonies were uh, somehow uh, prolonged and uh, we are starting with our graduation ceremonies in September um, uh, and so many other things. Uh, meanwhile, I have to say that I started with uh, the fact that we are a research-oriented university, so our research centers uh, uh, were really an enormous uh, uh, input uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, our research center of advanced, uh, uh, our research center, uh, center of translational and molecular medicine became the largest center of COVID-19 testing in the country. Uh, and so the university uh, came up with so many volunteering uh, activities. Sometimes it looked like the university substituting uh, the Czech Republic administrative bodies. So, so universities became extremely important in the Czech Republic and uh, this was uh, also highlighted by not just by the rector but also by the Ministry of Education and by, uh, by the Czech government. Finally, I have to say that uh, uh, besides talking about COVID-19 and besides uh, you know carrying out online teaching and uh, the, the regular activities, uh, so to say, um, our uh, recent period has been also tremendously <laughs> intensive as far as project agenda is concerned. So the university uh, again became extremely successful with the projects. We uh, won the largest uh, project as far as credit mobility. I'm talking about Erasmus Plus uh, mobility is concerned or Erasmus Plus program. We received almost 1.7 million euros for credit mobility in the coming or for the coming three years. Then uh, we participated in uh, European University Alliance. Uh, this is something of massive importance in, in the recent two years in, in Europe. Once again, it's uh, uh, European University Alliance. Europe has been creating a large consortia of important universities. And once these uh, consortia are strong, they can be awarded projects by Brussels and luckily this year uh, in the second call uh, Palatsky University Olomouc uh, has just succeeded and uh, we are part of a large consortium which is called Aurora and uh, this this is a big success uh, in the European uh, effort of, of uh, creating uh, important uh, super universities uh, not just in European scale, scale, but also worldwide. I do have so many uh, pieces of information. I don't want to take time uh, to, to John because he is going to, uh, to, to speak. Uh, and um, I'm really flattered to, to give the word to, to John uh, because uh, he represents the university uh, we are affiliated with. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Mikulas. Uh, just one short add-on, because you talked about that Palatsky University is one of the most internationalized universities in Czechia. Uh, do you have any estimates how the COVID situation affected, you know, like the international students, so, so for the next academic year, by which percentage the enrollment is lower? Or, or, you know, if you still maintain the same number, because I know like in, in a couple of countries, including the United States, as well as the UK, you know, there are huge losses from income revenue of the universities uh, from the tuition from the international students, because especially universities that are in the 10, 20 percent international students see, see a strong impact. Uh, brief answer, Professor. I, I know that you understand the huge difference, systemic difference between American universities and Central European universities, but uh, speaking about us, um, 
before I answer the, the question, I have to tell you uh, one very positive news. As you can see, I'm in Croatia, which is perfect. That means that Europe has been, you know, uh, doing uh, better and better, which is a uh, good news for, for the states, because I, I believe that uh, you'll have the situation better and better uh, as, as it can be seen uh, also in the European continent. Uh, speaking about the students, since we have been doing quite well, we are planning to, to send the same number of students, speaking about outbound mobility, words, we're planning to send the same uh, number of, of students to European countries as it was the case last year, two years ago, and so on. Speaking about uh, incoming students, I have to say we see something like one third uh, decrease. Obviously, uh, a vast uh, majority of the students prefer coming for the summer semester. So, so the winter semester, I'm, I'm talking about um, fall semester at the end of this calendar year, is going to be a little bit uh, weaker, but uh, hopefully uh, the, the other semester at the beginning of the coming calendar year 2021 will be uh, quite strong. Thank you. Then, Professor Kaimov, can you give us now an overview of the situation here in Iowa at the Cole College? Yes, thanks so much, Dr. Etrich. And uh, hello to my colleagues, and uh, thank you to Dr. Rokuza for the invitation as well, and um, Ms. Denstra for, for your patience and making all this happen. Thank you. Um, oh, there's so much one could say. Um, uh, Iowa has not been like its European counterparts. Um, and uh, I would say that the, the college that I come from, the institution that I come from, is unusual in the United States. So um, I teach at a very small liberal arts college. Its entire student population is 1,400. So uh, it's tiny, and its experience um, on, on a, in a normal year, in a normal day-to-day, -day, um, is, is probably different from uh, some larger institutions that are used to depending more on distance learning and, and whose instructors are just more comfortable with that. Um, one thing that we found when we pivoted to online was that our teachers had to really become learners themselves. And they had to learn to become comfortable with uh, classroom technology in ways that they had not been forced to be before. And it was wonderful to have professors who like to think of themselves as knowing everything suddenly be scrambling and having to um, put, you know, sort of um, not be graded necessarily by the students, but certainly be um, uh, trying, trying to learn and trying to catch up uh, and, and feeling that pressure that students feel on an everyday basis. So, so that was um, helpful, I think. Um, Another thing that's maybe sort of uh, also on the conceptual side is it has been a certain Sputnik moment for the importance of science and the importance of critical thinking in higher education in the United States. Um, perhaps only for half of our country, but for the half that, um, that, that sort of believes in those things, I think that belief has been intensified and the role of, of higher education in the US in being able to encourage students to be critical thinkers, to be critical consumers of information uh, about uh, what uh, medications might work or whether a mask might be a prudent thing to contribute to your, your community's health. Um, those things and, and encouraging students to base their actions on evidence and, um, and, and science, those things, I think, among, among a, a certain population in the country has, um, has, has intensified the, the importance of higher education. It's made it vital. Um, maybe another, uh, another thing that I could uh, talk about is how, um, uh, how par parents, uh, students, uh, by going home, uh, as, as most of them did, about 95% of our students uh, live on campus in a normal year. And, uh, and as of late March, about 95% of our students vanished. And uh, I was given to think of the uh, uh, underground cities that I have visited in Turkey 
sort of these sort of ancient, uh, you know, three thousand year old cities where people would would flee uh, invaders and vanish. Well, at our campus, you had the trees as usual uh, and the buildings as usual, but not a person to be seen. And so. Um, uh, I say instructors were given uh, a certain look into students' lives that we don't usually have to have. And, you know, I can remember uh, really it becoming real for me when a student um, went back home and her nine siblings were in the household with her. And whenever we were kind of conducting class, you know, there was the, the, the chaos that she had to um, deal with that she didn't have to deal with on a, on a daily basis uh, in the, the exceptional environment of our campus. Um, do I want to kind of leave it there? Um, uh, you know, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's a place that, maybe, maybe just one last thought. Um, I think that, um, you know, as we look towards the fall, um, we, will be, um, we will be starting our classes in person hopefully continuing through the semester in person. And it's going to be against a very different backdrop from the ones that Dr. Ostatnikova and Dr. Mikulosh have described in their countries. Um, and I can speak, again, speak about that, but um, uh, we will be requiring masks and we can do that on campus. But off campus, once students are out in the city and out in the state of Iowa, there is no such um, there is no such requirement. And when a, a mayor uh, of a municipality had the temerity to uh, propose such, um, uh, they were um, they were forbidden from doing that uh, by pronouncements from from higher up in the state. So. Um, it's going to be a very different environment off campus, and it will be a challenge for us to um, be keeping students safe and be keeping them engaged on campus where we can monitor their, um, their wearing of masks and, and their uh, social distancing. Thank you so much. Now, after hearing, you know, like all three of you uh, from the three different countries, uh, how and I might start now with uh, the Czech Republic, Professor Mikolaj, how we would compare uh, the responses across the three countries in relation to COVID-19 and higher education? And what you think could your country learn from the other two? Well, uh, well, uh, to, to me, uh, I think that, uh, well, as, as I mentioned, Polsk University is, is highly internationalized. So for us, COVID-19 was uh, quite an intensive matter, even in January, because we had our students all around the world, right? I mentioned to you that um, last year we had four and a half thousand students from 108 countries of the world. And, and obviously, um, we're, we are also very, very strong with, uh, uh, with, uh, agreements, so, so we do have more than 1,000 partners from all around the world, university partners. Um, and, um, and that's why, that, that's why you know, I, I can clearly see that, that both Czechs and Slovaks uh, had that experience quite early, right? Uh, COVID-19 uh, came to, to the States uh, a, bit, a bit later, so uh, that, that's the difference. I, I, I can, I can clearly see that what was happening here, um, let's say a month ago, is happening now in the States. Um, but uh, to me, I, I think that uh, what was really important is that uh, the academic life is going to be completely different. So, so we're going to be hopefully after COVID-19, but that reality is going to be different. Uh, there are many positives uh, which, which can be mentioned, not just negatives. Um, Central European universities, generally speaking, are quite skeptical about, uh, or were quite, quite skeptical about online uh, teaching and, and online uh, higher education. Nowadays, the reality has completely changed. You know, it's, it's the reality in which 
all the universities in the European continent, together with Central European universities of that German, German style uh, or Germanic style, they, they have to, they have to be on uh, ready uh, to, to provide uh, uh, higher education also through uh, the already discussed on, online means. Uh, Czech, the Czech Republic and the Slovak Republic are, are very, very close. Um, the reality is very similar to, to many, many, uh, in many, many details, I would say. To me, what's, what's really interesting is to see the role of universities. I think that the role of universities uh, are, it is stronger. Uh, now talking about the society, uh, society life, life in the society, uh, the universities themselves, they could have seen uh, that the research centers can be very easily and flexibly involved in those uh, actions which are needed, required by, by societies. And, and here, I, I think that it's, it's really uh, either or. If, if you have a good center in, in the Slovak Republic or a good center, research center in the Czech Republic, they can be very uh, inspirational to themselves and they can start, start, start working uh, uh, on the basis of, of good examples. Uh, and, and, and finally, you know, uh, I, I really think that uh, now, speaking speaking about covid-19 um, we are we are facing uh, the reality which which is not just tough but also to a certain extent innovative because uh, we need to get ready for the new reality and um, as to us palatsky has been working on uh, on the european uh, concept we have been trying our best to get out of that post-communist, um, let's say, experience, that mud, and uh, hopefully we'll be successful. Speaking about our relationship with uh, American universities, we still keep focused. So uh, American partners, either small or big, they, they are very important to us, and we want to uh, not just have our uh, inbound students from the states, but we want to carry on also uh, as far as uh, outbound uh, mobility uh, is concerned. Sending students, our students, to, to, to our European partners and obviously uh, collaboration, research collaboration between American universities and us, that's something that interests us. Sorry for that longer uh, input from my side. Thank you so much. And uh, now I would ask uh, Professor Kaimov, you know, how when you now listen to what you just heard about the Czech Republic, Slovakia, uh, how you compare and contrast the responses of COVID-19 to what you know here in the U.S. And uh, what do you think uh, we here in the U.S. could uh, uh, take away from uh, from 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 recipes or the responses that they did in uh, Czechia and Slovakia? Um, Dr. Mikolaj is very sweet to give uh, the U.S. the benefits of, of um, considering that our predicament uh, is um, or owes primarily to the happenstance of timing, but it really to me owes uh, to personal choices and um, the the inability of great swaths of the American population um, not to take seriously this thing that they can't really see, and they have to um, they have to sort of have faith is 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 there, and that sort of hope that it will go away, and um, faith in uh, I don't know faith in the people who who say it will um, that has been a terrible recipe for us I think. Um, uh, from Dr. Ostatnikova, um, I hear similarities in uh, in our students' social isolation to to what she spoke uh, of with hers. Um, also, in the increased attention to pedagogy, I think that's really been a great benefit uh, at both both our institutions. Um, also, the decrease in international students and just the the tougher time that the international students have had. Um, when Dr. Mikolaj talked about the increased importance of online learning, 
Um, that was certainly the case for spring. We uh, at Coe College uh, have to be uh, ready for that in the fall, but boy, our students, um, they do not like uh, uh, taking their classes online and they are desperate to be back in the classroom, seeing one another, talking with the professor and having that in-person uh, experience and sort of rejoining the campus family that they that they've come to love. Right, thank you. Maybe, maybe a brief question to all of you: How for, for the online delivery? Because uh, you know it, it's a word and it can mean very different things. Of the classes that you deliver, how many of those classes are really let's say face to face online? meaning uh, that it's a live stream where the students can directly ask back the teacher during the, the, the live streaming via Microsoft Teams or any other platform. And how many of the classes are, say, pre-recorded or, you know, like utilizing uh, an online tool compared to the situation before? Maybe we could start with uh, Daniela Ostatkova. Thank you very much. So I think that we in Slovakia really benefited for, from not having uh, high morbidity and high mortality. So it was completely different situation. We were not in such a panic. And uh, uh, I, would, I would continue and um, uh, answer your questions about how long period students have learned by by personal contact with teachers so we were with students on a weekly basis so we just mirrored the schedule we had during the summer semester i myself am teaching physiology lectures so my lectures were video recorded so the students had an access have an access to, and they, they do have still an access to all the lectures, but they were in a, in a direct contact for three to four hours every week, just talking, communicating with teachers, doing uh, preparing mind maps, asking questions, and uh, they were delivered some tasks to do, and then they had to to send it back to teachers, and then they they communicate and they have they have the contact which which was really really face to face contact through ms teams so um that was uh, that was quite comfortable for students and we have a feedback from our students and they say um the first weeks we were happy to have the home learning because we really we really uh, found it very effective and it was really for myself the same. I, I was uh, telling to my fellow teachers, well, it seems like I have a sabbatical at home, not, uh, not being stuck in the traffic in the morning and that the same in the evening. But then as the time went on, uh, we really felt that the personal communication is really missing. And, that's uh, I, I am the head of the institute and what i found uh, uh, very very um, personally very difficult is to check the work of my teachers how efficiently they communicate with the students because it is i couldn't check it simply when we have an on, on site classes i can go and see but uh, it was quite difficult for me to see how teachers were doing. So I think that um, the initial communication chaos at the beginning of March was really transformed within these three months to intensive creative work of the university faculty. And I hope that as Slovakia is, is uh, doing well, <laughs> So the international students will come back, and we have a we have end August. Uh, we have an entrance examinations for for international students. So I hope that they will come and study at Comenius University. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Mikulas. Yeah, 
speaking about uh, uh, online teaching, uh, I, I think that it's it's not just one reality. You know, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the higher education in in Central Europe is just, so. Uh, the more faculty you have, faculty is schools you have, uh, the the most uh, the, the more sorry the more decentralized reality there is. Uh, what do I mean by this? Since we have roughly 330 different uh, accredited study programs at our university, and and these are carried out at eight different faculties. Uh, we do have different reality at each of these uh, uh, of these faculties and at each of these programs. We have a, a program, for example, um, environmental development studies, which has been extremely organized and uh, perfectly functioning because it's a Erasmus Plus mass. Uh, it's a Erasmus Erasmus Plus um, Mundus uh, master program, European program. Uh, with roughly 20 students coming from all the parts of, of the world. Uh, but that's one part of the story. The other part of the story is uh, the other programs which uh, have faced real challenges as far as uh, online teaches, teaching is, is concerned. So they were not sure whether to use Zoom or whether to use uh, other platforms which would be suitable for, for teaching. Some faculties uh, we're doing very well. Some of our faculties uh, had a pretty challenging time. Uh, and the other thing is that you have to understand that uh, our uh, previous semester started, the regular teaching started in February, and it was done by the end of May. So by the end of May, the semester, the teaching was over, and then the exam period started. So it 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 was a very interesting experience and uh, obviously all those faculties all those schools we call these schools faculty sorry for that so all our faculties received a mirror mirror image because online education is quite a challenge in central europe i'm absolutely sure about that it's it's true for Comenius university it's true for charles university it's a challenge and um we have received uh, a nice lecture uh, and now we, we will see uh, whether we, we learned our lesson. Uh, and now I'm talking about those particular study programs existing at different departments of different schools or different faculties. And we'll see what's going to happen. We hope that there won't be anything like second wave. We hope that we are going to start uh, providing regular classes in the coming semester. But uh, I might be absolutely uh, wrong because this is about hopes um, and we, we might have uh, again the situation which can be um, quite similar to the situation we saw several months ago ago but I'm absolutely sure that now we are much wiser and now all the members of academic community whether older or younger all of them they, they know that uh, they must be ready if it uh, if it is uh, uh, less than good. If it's going to be bad, uh, they 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 will have to uh, be prepared for online teaching because that's the only way how how we can um, go through uh, these times. Thank you. And uh, finally, uh, Cole College. How was the situation at Cole College? You know, like which percentage you would think, let's say, as a rough average. Where really, you know, like live face to face recording or where later recordings and uh, the students had access to them? Um, I, I don't know if I have a percentage for this last spring. My sense was that more was asynchronous than synchronous. And part of that uh, owes to the fact that, um, you know, our students, when they went home, um, some went very far away into different time zones. So uh, for my morning class, I had students who uh, had gone home to Japan, had gone home to Korea, and there was, you know, 13, 14 hour time difference. And so it was too much to ask 
those students to be synchronously with with the rest of the class in a Zoom. So um, I did most of what I could do asynchron asynchronously, um, and then there was an optional part of, uh, of a get together chat uh, that that we had for those who wanted to opt in. So that was nice. Um, and I could just echo what Dr. Mikolash was, was saying at the end, that uh, his faculty and his, his professors are going to be wiser the second time around. Um, Co-faculty have been spending the summer doing faculty development, attending workshops. Um, in the spring, you know, we sort of scrambled and did the best we could on the spur of the moment. But this fall, um, we will have a much broader suite of tools at our disposal for including students in different ways and um, you know I hope to have uh, breakout rooms and 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 group work in online zooms um, I hope to have some uh, group annotation some communal annotation of texts and find different ways of, of sort of creating community it was that community that we really lost when everyone went in a separate direction but uh, we want to be more intentional this time around about creating it and bringing students together um, in class and out of class. Hey, thank you. So thank you all for sharing uh, your knowledge and perspectives on uh, these three countries that are all important to the National Czech and Slovak Museum and Library. Uh, now I would like to open it up to questions. Uh, first, I will check with Teresa. Uh, are there any questions in the chat, Teresa? There are none. There are none. All right. Okay. Then I would like to ask the attendees that are linked in. In that case, you can unmute if you want uh, to ask something. Does anyone have questions for our three panelists at this time? Well, this is Cecilia, and I have more of a comment that I hope you'll respond to. And thank you, uh, Dr. Ettrick, for your excellent questions and our panelists. This is really an honor, and you now will be uh, put out for the whole world to see, and we're so excited as Teresa puts up this webinar for everyone to share. I know that our fraternal groups and our, our um, American friends of the Czech Republic and friends of Slovakia are very interested in this. But I just made a couple of notes here, and I'm really grateful to you. First of all, we're learning from each other. I think that if anything that uh, COVID-19 is bad and disastrous, as it said globally, is that we are learning from each other. And the three take-home messages that I have for today, and I'd like you to comment on them, is I think, number one, it has forced change in the educational system. We've really been forced to, I think, in the Czech and Slovak about, but it really forced a quick implementation. And in the United States, it forced us to review our online. I mean, I think a lot of faculty we were doing online, we're doing it, being in a different non traditional learning that's in the United States to look at are we effective and are we creative? And I think for, for both uh, all three countries, the effectiveness and creativity are going to be key. Is it effective, especially in medical school, are we going to be creative to help make sure that our students learn all that needs to be learned? The second take home message is that I think uh, the challenge now, and Dr. Sokova brought it out, and both, uh, and, and especially Dr. Nicholas, about we don't know who's going to return, um, uh, whether it's our international students or not. And under that, are we going to avoid a second surge? And how are we going to manage and prevent that our uh, students don't transfer and increase? I mean, Slovakia has had such a stellar report. Czech Republic has been so good. We've not been so good. But how to make sure the international students, because we now will return to our ruling there, we can bring international students in. How can we manage and prevent the second surge? I think that's going to be really the key. And John, you brought that, Shema brought that out in terms of the fact that if students return, we might require masks, but are they going to wear them in the cafeteria? Are they going to wear them when they're, you know, play basketball? Uh, and that's going to be a big challenge. And the third take-home message is something that Dr. Austin Kovac brought up and I thought was brilliant, is the fact that we are not going to focus on research and pedagogy. 
I mean, research and pedagogy has kind of been put on the back burner, and it, we're going to probably go back to Boyer. That's the name now that in my day, Boyer and the science of teaching was a big deal. But I think now we're going to look on research and pedagogy, effectiveness, outcomes, and so hopefully the science people that will look back on pedagogy and say, uh, what did it do to our science of teaching? So I think you've all covered that very well, and I just commend uh, Dr. Edward for a fine question, but I think those that change the challenge for the future, and then I think our research, I see a lot of publications coming out of this in terms of how you change it, what happened, and, and impact. So congratulations to all of you, and we'll uh, keep in touch. Okay. Thank you, Cecilia, for the final words, and I think if there are no more questions, and I would once again thank everybody for participating in this great webinar. I hope you all uh, uh, got the inspiration and uh, new information. Uh, but we also saw that a pandemic is nothing national. Uh, the effects are very similar in the different countries and the responses you need to take to manage that quite well. So there are clear parallels and uh, clear steps that are effective that need to be taken. Uh, I personally, coming from the Czech Republic, I'm glad to see in Central Europe online education moving forward and making big steps forward. I hope this trend uh, where it makes sense still will continue even without a pandemic. And uh, with this, I would like uh, to say uh, have a great summer. Uh, try to enjoy life even in these unprecedented times. In Europe, you have it probably a little bit easier than we do it here currently. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we hope we will meet in, in better times again. Let's stay in touch. Bye. Bye-bye.